Won't you take a walk with me? And tell me what the world should be. Show me what it needs to be. A man of hope and peace. Cause I must know when the world seems so sad. And I must know when my feet are heavy like a stone. And I must walk. Won't you take a walk with me? Tell me what you'd like to see. Show me what it means to be a man of faith and dreams. Cause I must know. When the world seems so bad And I must know When the waves come crashing down That I must walk Steady on I breathe for you I breathe for you I must know when the world seems so sad And I must know when my feet are heavy like a stone That I must walk steady on My aim is you And I must know when the world seems so bad and I must know when the waves come crashing down that I must walk steady on I breathe for you I breathe for you Welcome everyone to the Hilltop Spiritual Center. My name is Paul Calabro and I'm your prayer practitioner for today. What a joy and an honor it is to be here with you in this moment of prayer and affirming our good, affirming our authentic selves. Let us now pray for that. There is one life, that life is God, that life is all that is. That life is compassion, that life is grace, that life is love, that life is truth. And that is who we are. We are that. We are that presence of infinite possibilities, of infinite love and eternal goodness. And so I pray today that this broadcast goes forth into that one mind of God where we all share and we all are inspired, where we all understand our true being of love, of harmony, of grace and joy. And so in great thanks, I give thanks for this, this prayer. I give thanks for you. I give thanks for Dr. Reverend Guy and all of us here today gathered together. How, beauty, how beautiful it is for all of us here to share in this moment. And so with that, I simply release this prayer. I let go and let God. And so it is. Here's now the reading. The reward for conformity is that everyone likes you except yourself.
by Rita Mae Brown. And so it is. Let us now meditate. Feel your feet or your body on the ground. And allow this energy from the ground to move up your body so that you sit vertically. Breathe softly. As if your breath is like a wave meeting the seashore. As the sky meets the ground. Trust in this presence. Feel. Feel as if you are standing in a meadow on a beautiful sunny day. Sense this presence as if it's a scent of a rose. The beauty and feel the warm embrace of a joy, of a deep peace. Allow allow this to unfold like the blossoming of a flower. No that you are loved and you are held by life. Hello, my friends. Thank you again for joining us. Before I begin anything, just a couple announcements that I just think are so exciting, I can't wait. Uh, the first is next Sunday, September 20th at 10 a.m., we are going to be doing a live service in our courtyard. Of course, the uh, virtual service will also drop Sunday morning, but uh, there's information on the website and on the newsletter, and I hope you'll plan on joining us. And the other thing, the thing that I'm really excited about as well, is that week, September 20th and 24th, I will be offering a class called The Foundation of New Thought. It's really uh, 30 some years of my study of Kabbalah, Freemasonry, New Thought, uh, you kind of name it, synthesizing it all, Ignatius spirituality, synthesizing it all into practices, principles, life enhancing tools. So again, information's on the website for that. Love to see you in that class that will be taught on Zoom. And now we make the path by walking. That's our theme for this September, but really it's a, it's a theme for the year. And it, it's kind of appropriate for this time of year for one reason that's very special to me is Friday, September 18th at sunset begins Rosh Hashanah, 
which is the Jewish New Year, and really introduces the three holy days of the, of the Jewish calendar, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and the Feast of Tabernacles. And it is said that this is such a, an intimate time uh, for new beginnings, for setting intentions, for expanding on, on where we're going and what we want to do. And it's preceded by this time that we're in right now, which is called the month of Elul. And please excuse my Hebrew, it's awful if non-existent. But Elul is kind of an interesting name for a month because the three letters, Alf, Lamad, Val, Ab, Lamad, are actually an acronym that means I am the beloved's and the beloved's is mine. And it's considered that this time of year that there is a great opportunity for intimacy and the human soul. And this is kind of what we're going and what we're wanting to look at. And so we go back to this idea of we make the path by walking. Because let's get something really straight. We're not going back to the way things were. That should be obvious. Uh, you know, we are living in a, a time of how would we call it? I think we would call it up until now, right? You know, up until now, I never did this. Up until now, we always did this. Up until now, school started in the fall. Up until now, we had service on Sunday. Up until now, we went to football games. Up until now, up until now, up until now. Everything has shifted and everything has changed. And so really, the only choice we have is to move forward into novelty and possibility. And, and I'm sure that that's, that's true in your life too, right? I mean, think about what's going on in your own personal life, your external life, your job, your activities, the things that you're so used to doing, maybe your household or even your home itself. How have things changed? What's, what's up until now there? And then on an interior level, boy, I mean, isn't that true? What, what all of us have been internalizing and going through and processing, trying to stay positive, trying to stay focused, trying to stay engaged. And you know, it's, it's kind of like everything is shifting and we're re-examining everything. And so of course, we make the path by walking. And, um, you know, I, I think that, you know, when I, when I think about um, why we go forward, it's because we're not finished yet. You're not finished with your life. I'm not finished with my life. The Hilltop Center is not finished with what it is. And so there's something else that's wanting to, to come forward. There's a, a, a rabbi that I, I really like. His name is uh, Bradley Artson. And um, he's, a, he's a theologian, he's a philosopher, he's a teacher. And I heard him tell this story one time about years ago he had an old dog named Molly. And it was apparent that Molly was getting sick and so he took her to the vet. And the vet said, well, you know, uh, she has cancer and she's dying. And, uh, and right now it's just about keeping her comfortable and keeping her kicking because she's still healthy enough to engage. And, and so he said to him, you know, how will I know when it's time? And the vet said, and this is important, the vet said, you'll know. You'll know when she's no longer a benefit to herself. Wow. And isn't that true for you? It's true for me. You know, we are still a benefit to ourself. It doesn't matter if we're a benefit to somebody or something else. What matters is, are you still a benefit to yourself? Well, of course you are. And, and so, um, you know, this is what we practice. And, and we practice this because what we're engaged in is something called aliveness. Brian McLaren in his book, we make, the, we make the Trail or We Make the Road by Walking, I think it is, says this. He says, what we all want is pretty simple, really. We want to be alive, to feel alive, not just to exist, but to thrive, to live out loud, walk, talk, breathe free. We want to be less lonely, 
less exhausted, less conflicted or afraid, more awake, more grateful, more energized and purposeful. We capture this kind of mindful, over-brimming life in terms of, like well-being, shalom, blessedness, wholeness, harmony, life to the full, and aliveness. But you know, this idea of aliveness is 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 under threat. Let's let's not make any any bones about that. I mean, those of us who live in California or our friends that are in Oregon uh, know and are experiencing the the devastation of these great conflagrations that are happening. All of us are being affected by the economy. All of us are being affected by the the, the pandemic, and and um, it's it's this present economic, political, cultural system that's that's really the threat. Because not only is it too big to fail, it's too big to control. And we can see that just as we as we look around. And so what we know is something is wanting to emerge. And we continue on the path. And uh, you know, here's the thing. We're gonna figure this out as we go. We're gonna be guided as we go. We're gonna support each other as we move forward in this. And, and what we're going to do, because we still can, is we're gonna practice kindness. We're gonna practice acceptance. We're gonna practice openness. Not because there's some reward in those things, but because they're the right thing to do. In our path, we're, we are mindful of our community and of the world. Uh, our, our community, the planets, the animals, each other, we're all dependent on it. Each of us, it's important, are part of a, a revolution of the heart. And you know, this revolution of the heart, I think takes place in, in four areas. It's, it's gonna be, it has to be global. It needs to be spiritual. It needs to be social. And it needs to be a movement. It needs to be global because as we look around, what's obvious is these, these experiences that we're in are not are not contained by, by any boundaries whatsoever. It's not like one country or one community or one family or even one individual needs to get it right. We're all in this together. It's a planetary thing. Sooner or later, we're gonna catch on to this universal principle that all life is united by that fact. And it needs to be spiritual. It needs to be spiritual because what we know is our brain-centered ideas of politics and our brain-centered ideas of economics don't work. I mean, it's kind of like that, uh, that, that Disney cartoon years ago, you know, of, of, the, of the Sorcerer's Apprentice. You know, we try to fix it one way and then it shows up another way. And so really it's about returning to our spiritual roots. And it needs to be social because it's not a top-down thing. You can't dictate this stuff to someone else, nor can you make someone else do it any more than I can make you do something. So it's, it's a social thing because it's, it's a movement. And what I mean by a movement is it's grassroots. It's not top-down. It's bottom-up because grassroots affects institutions and societies. And so we go person to person, friend to friend, family to family, community to community, country to country, species to species. All of us together engage in this path and we allow ourselves to be guided and to be led by this. I sort of want to create an image for you if I can, and this comes out of Kabbalah. Uh, the Kabbalahs who, were, who are Jewish mystics say this, that at the very beginning, the creation of the world, which Rosh Hashanah celebrates, uh, the Torah existed in its purest 
perfect form. And it was without words. And what they said was, you know, Torah was just sort of this radiance that was in and around and through all things. And the ancient patriarchs and matriarchs were sensitive to it, but they couldn't articulate it per se. And part of that was is because the Torah itself, this divine word, this divine beingness was perfect. But because we live in an unfinished world, an unfinished universe, it is therefore somewhat imperfect. And so the only way that God could give the Torah to us was to reduce it and reduce it and reduce it. And it was given on Sinai in words. But what the Kabbalists say is this, every action that we do in alignment with the principle of Torah is a new revelation. You are a revelation of this divine idea. You know, Ernest Holmes, the founder of our denomination, says it this way, you are a center of divine consciousness within the vast whole. You are a, a revelation of Torah. And every action that we do, every insight that you have, every time kindness is practiced, acceptance is practiced, generosity is practiced, another revelation of, of Torah is, is given to us. Our life is not a destination. It's not a status. It's not a holding tank. Our life is a road. Our life is a process. Um, we are always invited to move from what was to what is possible. We are always invited into this great quest for aliveness. And, um, you know, Paul gave a, a reading at the very beginning of this uh, experience that we're having today where he, where he reads the quote, he says, the rewards for conformity, everyone likes you except yourself. Ralph Waldo Emerson, who was uh, a great American transcendentalist and philosopher and teacher, kind of says it's this way. He says, your genuine actions will explain itself and your other genuine actions. Your conformity explains nothing. And so part of this, part of this opportunity to be a, a revelation of divinity, a revelation of Torah, is to act genuinely. And, and what Emerson would say is, for us to be a true human being, we must be a nonconformist. In the Bhagavad Gita, it's said differently. It's called Dharma, which is living our life with purpose, knowing what ours is to do and what's not ours to release. It is about living our original and genuine self because that is the movement that is the social experience by certainty that's the spirituality that we practice and this revolution of the heart is global and it begins by you and i being real clear about what's ours to do and and what's not ours to do is someone else's to do and they will do it better and we can focus our energy our attention on what's genuine and appropriate for us to do and i want to offer a practice and let me say up front um, if your device has a a reach out and slap someone device you're probably want to you're probably going to want to use it on this practice but bear with me Bear with me on this because, you know, I won't offer you anything. I promise I will not offer you anything that I don't practice myself. And this comes from the Bhagavad Gita. And in the Bhagavad Gita, it's this wonderful, beautiful poem uh, that is part of the Hindu tradition. 
And, and the poem actually takes place on a battlefield. Uh, Krishna is the great charioteer. He's the divine idea. He's the wisdom. He's our higher self that's luring us. And Arjuna, Arjuna is that growing part of our self, that seeking understanding. And Arjuna is looking out and without getting into too much detail, you know, he is, he is looking at what is his to do and it terrifies him and he wants to withdraw and he wants to become a monk and he wants to just pull away from the world. Krishna is like, no, you got to do this. You got to be engaged in this. And, and Arjuna says, well, well, teach me then. How do I go about doing this? So here comes the practice. So what, what Krishna says to him is this. He says that whatever happened, happened for the good. Whatever is happening is happening for the good. And whatever will happen will happen for the good. And I can just imagine what you're thinking right now. What? That, uh, that job lost was for my good? What? That, that thing that appeared in the x-ray is for my good? Personally, what? That motorcycle accident was for my good? But, but let me be clear here of what I'm saying. What I am not saying is everything happens for a reason. I'm not saying that at all. Nor am I saying that God uh, uh, created circumstances for things to happen. Or another way of saying that is that God could have uh, prevented circumstances but did not. We, we live in an unfinished universe that is evolving. And so when people say everything happens for a reason, no, it's, it's not a determined universe. It's an unfolding universe. And, and God is present in every moment inviting us. And so whatever happened, happened for the good. Why? Because we believe before we see. We perceive before we experience. And if I can say, look back and say, you know, there's good for me in this thing. I can't see it now. I don't understand it yet. But I'm open to an experience of good in this. And what's going on right now, man? I lost my job. I don't know. There's this thing that's growing on my skin, uh, whatever the case may be, you know, I may not understand that, but I'm going to accept that there's good here. And I'm going to accept that there's good because I believe that this divine presence is alive within me and all around me and in everything. And that if I open myself to a possibility, it's going to reveal itself. Because if my intention or if my attention is on what's not working, I'm only going to see what's not working. But if my attention is on what's possible, I'm going to see what's possible. So here's the practice. is to say to yourself, everything that has happened has happened for the good. Everything that is happening is happening for the good. Everything that will happen will happen for the good. And this is how we take our power back. This is how we engage in aliveness. This is how we, we create a global, spiritual, social movement. Um, this is how we participate in a revolution of the heart. To understand you are a center of divine consciousness. You are a revelation of Torah. You are God's beloved. And that divine idea is always there, inspiring us, leading us, inviting us and luring us to the highest good that is possible in any in every situation and so my prayer my blessing is this 
and it comes from William Blake. When the doors of perception are clear, we shall see all things as they are, divine. And so, may the veil fall from, the, from our eyes. May our ears be clear. May we perceive beauty and goodness and the sublime in all things, as all things, through all things. And in that, we see the light that allows us to make the path by walking. And so again, as I said at the beginning of this service, pay attention to the emails, pay attention to the website for all the exciting things that are going on. It is important that you reserve because we want to stay in conformity with the CDC so we can only allow so many people. And again, everything that we do, everything that we create, all that we have is our gift to you. But we invite you to join in a fellowship a fellowship that allows us to participate, to love, and to support each other with all the gifts that are there, but all the obligations as well, which is we depend on you. We depend on you to support this great work that we're doing. So thank you for your continual and generous support of your time, of your treasures, and of your talents. And to you, and those whom you love, and those whom you receive love from, I wish you many, many blessings. I've been talking to the mouth of my Take the lead I've been trekking through them muddy waters Lost my footing I've been talking to the preachers To share my sins I've been trekking through the Trekking through them desert roads A long way home Calls my ears, calls my name. You're all.
you're saying the 